Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to try and answer a question you guys are always asking me. F2 Hyperstar or F4 Fast Refractor? Now I wish there was a easy answer I could give you, but I just can't. I shoot with both systems and as fast as they image, both of them have their pros and cons. That's why I own both of them. Well, hopefully I'm going to answer that question by the end of this video. And we're gonna put these two scopes head to head. It is new moon weekend and I have two nights of clear skies. So I think what we're gonna do is put these guys head to head, see how much signal we're gonna capture and compare the results. But first, let's select our target. The target I selected for this shootout is SH2-155, also known as the Cave Nebula. Now the Cave Nebula is not necessarily too dim, it's not necessarily too bright, it's actually somewhere in between. It has a magnitude of 7.7. .7. So it's still gonna take a considerable amount of signal to expose it properly, but that's what we want. I'll be shooting in monochrome tonight and we'll be looking at how much signal we're getting at each focal ratio across different filters. So let's look at our target real quick. And I got a few photos off of Astrobin so we know what we're gonna be getting into. I've actually never shot the Cave Nebula on its own, but I have shot it as a part of a scene, but it's always been super faint in that scene. But yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Here's an image search and the Cave Nebula is rather colorful and people shoot it in LRGB and also narrowband. We're going to be shooting it narrowband tonight. But I got a few photos off of Astroband I'd like to show you. So the first one is this here. And this was shot in LRGB and also HA by, is it Redden? Redden, I hope I didn't murder your name, but I really like your photo, by the way. And Redden spent about, let's see here, 15 hours of exposure time, total integration uh, on this target here. So 15 hours here to get that. And also I selected this photo. This one I really like, this is in narrow band. And this was done by Mao Bard. And Mao spent almost 17 hours of integration on this target. Oh my goodness. And it came out beautifully. Now we're only gonna be shooting for an hour in each filter. <laughs> I know, crazy, right? But let's talk about the gear we'll be using next. Now I mentioned we'd be shooting in monochrome and I think what we're gonna be doing is shooting with the ASI 294MM Pro. Ideally, I would want to run both imaging scopes on the same night, but I just don't have two 294s here. So I'm gonna have to run these on consecutive nights, but Thing is, it is a new moon weekend, so the sky conditions are going to be relatively the same. The imaging scopes I'll be using are the Ascar 103 and also the Celestron C6. Now let's check those out a little bit. Uh, so I'll be shooting at 420 millimeters at f4, and if you're interested, the sampling I'm going to get is at 2.2. So it's gonna be rather good and I'll be shooting the 294 at 47 megapixels because I want as much resolution as possible on this target and you'll see why later. So here's the field of view with my Hyperstar C6. So I'll be shooting at F2 at 300 millimeters. And if you're also wondering, we do have a sampling of 3.1. Now. Between the 103 and Celestron C6 Hyperstar, you'll see it's pretty evenly matched. I also matched the filters up pretty well, I think. On the Ascar 103, we'll be shooting with the ZWO, 
seven nanometer filters. And also on the Hyperstar, we'll be shooting with the specialized filters for it, the F2 optimized Bader six and a half nanometer filters. Now I only have HA and O3 in the Baders. Honestly, I shoot with a 12 nanometer in S2, but we're just gonna take that out of the equation and just shoot HA and O3 on each system. We're also gonna only expose for one hour in each filter, so we can see in one hour, stacked, how much signal we can acquire with each of these filters on each of these systems. So let's get out there and get some data. I don't know if you can hear that. There are a lot of coyotes out right now. There's one across the field over here. Sounds really close and he, he sounds super creepy right now. I feel like it's one of those nights where I might get eaten. I don't know. It's creepy right now. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because the moon isn't out. It's definitely creepier than usual. I got all my data across two nights, guys, with two different scopes, F2 and F4. Can't wait to see what this data looks like, but it's time for me to go home. But check that out. Look at all that fog back there. Isn't that crazy? It's looking creepy. <laughs> all right, guys, this is good night. All right, guys, we are back. But before I share the results, and I... Got some interesting results, actually. I just wanna make sure those of you that are new to astrophotography and you're asking yourself why I had to shoot through specialized filters on the Hyperstar system at F2, it has to do with how light enters the tube. So when you shoot at a fast focal ratio, such as F2, on that type of scope, what happens is if you don't have the right filter in front of it, the exact opposite happens where you start to capture less signal. It's called van pass shift. So Hyperstar shooting at F2 requires a special set of filters or filters with a wide enough van pass to allow for that. And I just wanted to make sure uh, with this challenge or this shootout, uh, that both systems were optimized for, for their focal ratios. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that before we got into the data. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's go check out our data. Here is the data on the cave nebula, and this is the hyperstar data in hydrogen alpha. And as you see, we did get quite a bit of signal here. I'm actually impressed. This is one hour, guys. So <laughs> for us to get this in an hour is amazing. But let's check out the F4 data and compare it to the F2 data. So here is the ASCAR. And as you see, there's not a lot of difference when you just kind of look at them. Uh, at first glance, 
you know, what I notice is the F2 system actually has a lot more contrast, but it's actually more than that. So let's take a closer look at it. So with the F2 data, if we zoom in here, and we notice this area here where the dark nebula trails off, you'll notice here in the F4 data, it's not as defined. So we're capturing less signal there. Also, here in this area, you'll see some dark nebula trail off here. We do see that structure here, but it is not as defined either, especially down in this area where it just kind of fades off. Uh, this one actually, you can kind of follow it all the way down. Now if we zoom in here on this area here, and to me this looks like a shrimp face, okay? I mean, I get where the cave is right here, but this here just reminds me of a shrimp face. I like want to call it the shrimp face nebula, but anyways. Uh, we have all this stuff super well defined. It's really nice and dark. Uh, with the Ascar system here, you'll see that at F4, it's a little ambiguous, right? Uh, you can see that there wasn't as much data captured at F4 than there is at F2. Now we were expecting that, right? But both systems did a really good job, and honestly, the F4 system wasn't really far behind. I actually think the F4 system is really, really nice. That's why I like and shoot with the Ascar 103. Okay. It's a different story in the Oxygen 3, though, so let's grab that for you guys. So here's the Oxygen 3 from Hyperstar, and it's pretty faint, right? But remember, this is an hour, and I'm going to zoom in here like this. And let's check out the Ascar 103. So here's the 103. And look at that. No contest whatsoever. The Hyperstar captured more stars, number one, but also more O3 data. Uh, we can actually see a lot of the dark nebula trails emerging here versus on the 103 at F4. It's not as defined out here either. Uh, if we zoom in a little closer, wow, uh, we uh, see that the nebula, the O3 part of the nebula is more present here than here. So this is where Hyperstar F2 shines. Uh, it will capture more signal, uh, especially in those dimmer regions, and this is what it looks like. So now you have a direct comparison between F4 and also F2. Now that being said, I was able to make a photo with the Hyperstar data because I collected enough signal. When I looked at the O3 from the Ascar 103, this wasn't enough to make a photo from it. So let me show you the photo that I got from the cave uh, with the Hyperstar data. And I decided to make it a HHO palette. Uh, I just kind of dig that, especially when I don't capture sulfur. I find it really helpful to insert hydrogen in there instead of oxygen. But we were able to expose a lot of the nebula here. It's red, uh, really red in there. That's expected. We got a lot of hydrogen alpha. And I actually like the narrowband stars, too. Some people don't like narrowband stars, but uh, this in this scene, it actually works out. Now, technically, we have two hours in HA and two hours in O3. And what I did was I ended up merging all of the data together. And that's why I wanted to shoot at 47 megapixels, because I wanted to make sure I had enough resolution to do this. I used star alignment in Pix Insight, and check it out. I think you'll be surprised. 
here is our data all together. Two hours in HA, two hours in O3, and look how much more colorful it got just adding the F4 data. Also, the dark nebula in this region sticks out a lot more. Look at that. And it made a really beautiful photograph. And I'm going to continue to work on this because I really want that blue oxygen color in this area here. So we will definitely revisit this target. But in the meantime, guys, enjoy my photo of the cave nebula. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. And what do you think about the results that we got? Put them down in the comments, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>